Hello, everyone. I'm Charlie, and welcome back to another DraftKings Soccer DFS Slate Breakdown. So, we're back, finally back after international break. It's been a couple of weeks, so I'm a little bit rusty, but we have a large slate to look forward to here. Five gamer, some really nice contests offered by DraftKings, so I'm super excited for it, especially to finally get back into club soccer that international break had a lot of friendly games and just basically matches that teams weren't really trying as hard or like we get like got like unexpected subs and whatnot so i'm excited to get back into like real real club soccer and all that all right in terms of projected lineups for bournemouth and everton if it's these teams it should be a scott and Christie split or a Cook and Christie split. Like we've seen Cook and Scott swap who has priority all season. So who knows, especially after a long break, you see club teams switch their set pieces all the time. So that's something to worry about. If we see Tavernier in, he has priority for left footed set pieces over Christie. So keep that in mind. For Everton, it should be a Gardner McNeil split. If there's no McNeil, it'll be Harrison. And that's that. They're their Deitch ball in swing corners, though, is the important thing. Chelsea Burnley. Now, Chelsea are super line dependent. Like, there's a lot of guys who could be in, could not be in, like Chilwell, like Mudrick. If it's this projected lineup, it'll be a Palmer Mudrick split. If we see no Mudrick, it'll be a Palmer Gallagher split. If we see Chilwell in there, it'll probably be Chilwell Mudrick or even Chilwell everything, potentially. So yeah, they're they're very they're very lineup dependent, but in this team, Palmer Mudrick. All right, Burnley. In this team, Barun Larson. Almost everything. We could see maybe Cullen take over Brune Larson. They swapped a couple of times this season, too. If there's good months in, in, he'll take the most. The worry about Brune Larson is he gets subbed like at the 60th minute on the dot almost every game. Interesting that they have Trappard in over Mirich. That last game that Burnley played right before international game against in, in, the international break, I mean against Brentford, like Munich was in there and he did super well. So I'm kind of surprised that they have Trafford in, but I guess we'll see come uh, lineups. Nottingham Forest, Gibbs White Monopoly, pretty self-explanatory. For Crystal Palace, it should be an Eze Wharton split. We've seen IU take in the past. We've seen Wharton take everything in the past, but Last game was Wharton Eze, but just don't be surprised if that changes considering the layoff and considering Glasner kind of has finally had that week or two to settle down and kind of decide to set pieces. But for now, I just assume it's Wharton Eze until proven otherwise. Sheffield United and this team, Homer Monopoly, we could maybe see Osborne. Pop on a thing or two. We could see Oliver Norwood in, and he could take a share. But Tom or Monopoly, likely. For Fulham, Pereira, almost everything. Could see Willian take a couple, but largely Pereira. All right. Now, this is kind of the big game. Tottenham are the biggest favorites on the slate. I didn't even talk about the odds, which I should have. Like, yeah, minus 500 on them. Chelsea pretty big at minus 300, too. But those are the two big favorites. So, yeah, minus 500 Tottenham. Pedro Poro should take the most corners. I want to say we've seen Madison take a couple, though, like... I'm still not completely sure what their kind of deal is with Porto and Madison on the field together. I don't know if they're completely sure what they want to do. It's super risky fading one or the other is the issue because both could take everything, both could take nothing. They both might not even need set pieces to do what they need to do. They both have pretty good open play value. And then for Luton, 
in this team, it should be a Ross Barkley monopoly. We could see Luke Barry potentially split with him. We could see Dowdy, and he'd take 90% of the set pieces. Although, I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe even swap to a barkley Dowdy split with both in, considering they scored off of a Barkley corner last league game, although I know that was a while ago. I'm kind of, it's kind of strange that Dowdy isn't in. He's not injured or anything. We'll see if he actually plays or not. Like, it, it'd be surprising to me if they ran Townsend at left wing back over Dowdy. In terms of prices, for forward, Son's the most, like, for good reason. He just has potential to just really go off for them. Although, he definitely can bust too. But he's probably, I haven't looked at goal scoring odds or anything, but I'd be surprised if he wasn't the highest. Gibbs White, this seems a little expensive to me. I know he's been super, super good. But when there's Tottenham on this slate at minus 500 against Luton, even Chelsea, who you never really know what they're going to get from him. Like, they still provide plenty of alternatives for cheaper or just better, like San is, just a better player. Eze, I'm still a little bit wait and see on them. Like, I know he's been super solid, but I don't, I just don't know what their set situation is going to be for sure. Like, I just kind of gravitate more towards those Tottenham pieces, considering the matchup. Muniz, he's been super, super hot, but I just can't imagine he keeps this up. Like, this run is insane. How many games in a row is that with minimum eight points? One, two, three, four, five, six games. That is crazy. I just feel like he's just sun running a little bit. Like, he's down, he's got to just surely regress at some point. He's, he's too expensive for me. For Charleston, I worry about his minutes a little bit. Like, Timo Werner is healthy. Like, they, they rotate these him and Werner quite a bit, considering Kusevsky and San basically go 90 every game. You don't see them get subbed very often. Madison, same. I know they subbed him last game. But that was against Fulham. They were 3-0 down. There was kind of nothing to play for at that point. Like, more often than not, Richardson is the guy who comes off for Timo. Nicholas Jackson. This is a good GPP play to me. Another guy who's been super in form. But I just like a little bit of more floor for my forwards. And if they are lacking that, I'd rather get up to just San, who is just far and away the best premium option, in my opinion, for cash. So, like, he's been playing through injury a little bit, I've heard. Still hasn't saw, stopped him from being pretty solid. Like, there's a lot of pretty good forwards on this slate. So it's kind of the nature of it being a five gamer. That's just kind of different forwards available in the player pool. McNeil, any other day, I'd just kind of plug him, but 8K is probably fair, but there's just some really nice mids that I'm going to get into that make it hard to pay up at forward. Brennan Johnson, 7,600, that's not bad if he's in. I like Tottenham a lot here, as I as I continue to harp on about Werner. Not as big of a fan of him as Brennan, but like any Tottenham guy, I feel like could be really solid here. I if there's no Ezra somehow, he'd split. Otherwise, not interested really. Brune Larson, who was just insane last game, kicking myself for fading him. I thought Cullen would take over him and because that's what they did the game before, but then Next thing you know, Brune Larson just is on every corner, takes a penalty. Here, though, against Chelsea, not as big of a fan. Brereton Diaz, I always love him. I just don't think he's worth it for this much, though. If he was like in that 4K range, I'd be a lot more intrigued. Good Munson, not really. I'm kind of looking for... Ultra value here. Carlton Morris is a little much. Odo Bear is a little much. Townsend, don't like the matchup. I do 8K if in. 
I, I could get behind Madueke for 5K. Minus 300 favor. He's, I see him just as a crossing player. I don't know if he actually lives up to that. I mean, when you look. Eh, not really, but he, he, he gets there. Like He's got goal potential in him. Worry a little bit about a halftime yoink is the thing. But for 5K, definitely do worse. Origi, I played him against Luton. Nine points. I kind of like Origi a lot here for 4,800. Like he's shown a little bit of floor, honestly. Like look at that nine. Oh, he had an assist that game. But like nine in 75 minutes, six and 60. I kind of like that a lot. Cliver to Dango Watara. They're both not bad. Like I, I, you might need a value forward here, and there's there's some nice options here, especially on Bournemouth with Dango and Cliver. Can get behind both those guys, honestly. Dominic Calvert Lewin was he projected? No, it's Beto. Man, he's such an enigma. Like he just feels like. He just puts himself in such good opportunities so often that he has to put one away at some point. Just we have not seen it. But this could be a slate where you just go back to the well and it could work for GPP or even cash just for his value. Mid, the big two names here are Cole Palmer and James Madison. You're probably going at least one in cash, potentially even both, depending on how you decide to go. Like, they're both super in playing cash, super in playing GBP. Like, what I'm thinking about Palmer is if Chilwell is in, I probably fade despite upside is kind of his main deal, but it's just something to think about just not having set pieces. Just a small little factor to think about. If there's no chill, like he takes set pieces, he's the most likely a score on Chelsea. I can get behind that. James Madison, he might not take a thing because of Poro. And then he's just another upside piece. He's a lot more expensive than most of the other Tottenham guys other than Madison, who is more likely to score than, 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 than he is. Like, that's my worry with Madison, but... Like, if he ends up taking, he's going to have 25 points, probably. Like, that's just a scary thing to think about. That's why it's hard to fade him in cash, really hard. Um, Like, those are the big guys. Like, there's Tavernier. There's these other guys who are going to get overlooked because of those top dog options. But they're going to get overlooked for, in my opinion, good reason. Because those guys are kind of so far and away the best options. Like, everyone else... Kind of just another body. Mudrick, he's on set pieces. I could get behind it. But I just feel like 7500 is a little much for him. He gets subbed quite a bit. A little much for me. Sterling, I'm, he's just bad in real life. So I, I just I can't stand him. Took the penalty over Paul Palmer in that cup game. It really bothered me so much considering Palmer's, like his whole kind of reputation as being Hold and take set pieces or taking penalties is a part of that. Uh, Pereira, 7,300. He's always not terrible. I just think there's too many other options here with a little bit more upside. Dowdy, 7K, don't like the matchup. Not really thinking about that. Gallagher, if there's no Mudrick, I could, I could see it. He's not a guy who just gets points. Like he's got quite a few tackles every game. He gets key passes. Throwing some crosses in there when he takes set pieces. Like those are the kind of games you can have. 37 points in Special Palace. But I can get behind that. Caveating that there's no Mudrick. Kusevsky. I really like Hulu here. He goes 90 almost every game. Like it's kind of insane how often he, he does, despite being a winger on a team with quite a bit of attackers. But he's always the guy who manages to stay in. He's taking, like, a little share of corners lately. Like, he's kind of the safe guy since Madison Poor are both right-footed guys. So, you assume they'd be competing with each other. Well, who says he kind of remains outside of that as a left-footed option. I know he did bad against Fulham, but 
He's the cheapest Tottenham attacker with a potential share of set pieces and a guy who just goes 90 so often. Like, I really like Kulusevsky here. I don't really, it's hard to put him like in my core just because there's probably safer options on paper. I just think he's such a good play for that price on with that matchup. Like, I really like Hulu here. Barkley, he's always just been same with Enzo and Barkley, both of these guys who are not really my cup of tea, but they just end up getting points. Before Bar- Barkley took last game, so I can get that play a little bit more. But like all of these other games, he didn't take a thing. He's played north of 10 points pretty often. I just don't think this is the matchup for him. Like he, he continues to prove me wrong, so I wouldn't be surprised if he did again. Tottenham can be leaky defensively, but not my kind of guy. Enzo, man, he got that goal for Argentina, which bothered me. He was super chalky last this international break. Like, I just don't like that he's this much for a guy who shouldn't be getting as many points as he is. Like, he's just getting a lot of shots, a lot of key passes. Like, these kind of things are not super predictable. Like, you can crosses. So, like, that's my issue with Enzo, but. Like he just he delivers. Uh, uh, he, he doesn't need to make sense. Like at the end of the day, it just comes down to raw points, and he gets those so often. Christie, that's not bad. If there's no Tavernier, look at look at these some of these games he's had. Really big scores. I can get behind a Ryan Christie play for that price for sure. Yeah, everyone else is kind of meh. Cook, if there's no. God, that's likely set pieces. He's he's had some pretty good scores. I think he's a little much. Like Axe Cup at thirty eight hundred is definitely a lot more tempting to me than Cook for five. Palmer for five. See, this is where you can justify maybe getting off of a Madison or a Cole Palmer. There's a, quite a bit of these mid range guys who are pretty decent. You got Hammer, you got Kulusevsky, you got Alex Scott for ultra value. They're all midfield slots, and, and that allows you to pay up for these pretty big name forwards, like your Saw, like your Gibbs White, like your Richarlison. So there's the argument of getting off of a Palmer or a Madison. This 5K ring, which is which is pretty nice. Everyone else is just whatever. Like, I don't really think there's anyone worth picking out besides Alex Scott. I could see the argument with like a Hoiberg or one of those other, like a Saar Benton Cooler. How much is Saar? I didn't see him. Saar is a guy who gets pretty decently forward. 5K, though, is a little much for me. Benton Cooler was how much? I could see the argument of just getting cotton exposure through. They're cheap guys like Benton Coor, but they're cheap because they're not like the main outlets for them. Luke Bear, he's taken some some corners in the past. Where was he? I just saw him. I lost him again. Here he is. He's taken some corners in the past. He got that goal against Nottingham Forest. You can do worse for stone 3300 like almost 3k but tough matchup the guy who probably gets subbed he's barely played in the premier league there's tyler adams i was his goal for usa huh he's not a dfs player though, despite that goal <laughs> over your national break yeah on the rest defenders you more likely than not just plug Pedro Porro. Probably takes corners. He was bad against Fulham, but most of Tottenham were. Like, look at that. He's, he's, he's just solid. There's not a ton of super good defenders that he's competing against here. Like, Anthony Robinson's always been all right, but I'd go Porro over. There's only a 400 difference. Gusto's there. That's probably his closest competitor. Chelsea are a big favorite. Gusto gets super far forward. But, like, once again, why would you risk that? 
considering the ceiling that Pedro Porro has with if he takes set pieces. Like, look at this. He's had some massive games. There's just no really reason to, to get too cheeky. He's not that expensive. But you go Poro. Maybe even go both if you go for more balanced build. Everyone else is just kind of whatever. Ashley Young, if there's no James Garner, that would mean he takes set pieces. That would be interesting. Everyone else is just another body. I've said it before. There's not a huge edge between any of these guys. Like, all these games are pretty even. Besides Chelsea and Tottenham. I know Fulham are minus 100 still. It's probably closer than that, I feel like. And Tottenham are, and Fulham defenders aren't. Well, I don't, I, I don't want to say Tottenham defenders are bad, but they're, they're fairly priced. Like there's, They're not value alternatives, and they're on a worse matchup. And Castagne, who is just not that good for DFS. He had 15 against Tottenham with that assist, but that's pretty rare for him. Usually lands in this three to six range, which isn't good enough on a five gamer. Udoji, or who was Tottenham's left back? Was it Udoji? Yeah. Um, I don't know. They inverted him, so he didn't get a ton of crosses, is the issue. He gets decently forward, so you can make the argument for GPP. For cash, yeah, I'm not really feeling him. Probably going to pay down at second D, considering how many really good expensive options there are in other positions. Ben Chilwell, though. I'll play him if he's in. He had a really good game for England against Brazil, which is kind of rare for him, considering he's usually not got a ton of floor. But if he continues to offer something similar, I can get behind him. He's got that knock, though, so we'll, we'll see if he actually starts. If he's in, I'll play him. I'll play him for sure, probably, for 3K. Like That's so cheap for a set-piece taking minus odds fullback. Dragusin, I can get behind the pay-down guys on the minus odds teams, any of them really. Get behind anything at this range too, like 2,500 is just a punt. Maybe they get there, like Niakate. Ooh, Patterson for 2,600. Was he in projected? No, but he, he looked pretty good for Scotland over the international break. 2,600 fullback, that's a great play. You can't go worse. Can't, 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 can't go wrong with that. Everyone else is punt. Diop, punt. Trusty, Tarkovsky, all punts. All these guys are all right if you just land on him. Montiel's not bad if he's in for 3K fullback. Yeah, that's defender. Goalie is always crapshoot. I've, I've said everything I, I, I can say about it in the past videos. In terms of a core, hmm, past core, let's think about this. You, I could put Kuli, but I probably won't, even though I really like him as a play. If there's no Chilwell, I'm playing Palmer. I could very likely see my core ending up like this. If there's Chilwell, that changes a lot. I probably do this. Kill well in if there's if the, if he plays. I put him in my core. I go those three. If the projected lineups are correct, though, I think I'm gonna go Poro, Madison, Palmer. I know it's expensive, but there are a couple of good value forwards like DCL. Ugh, I, I I hesitate by using the word good, but cheap options. Let's just say. And Clivert was in projected. We'll see if him or Otara play. One of them should be in for sure. And then, yeah, you just make that work. I feel like, I like there's there's like uh, would I put Scott in my core if there's no Lewis Cook? I love Alex Scott. Even with Lewis Cook, I can get behind it. I wouldn't be core or anything, but just just thinking in my head about what I could potentially put there. But yeah, Palmer, Madison, Poro, like Kulusevsky, Palmer, those are the guys I'm thinking about. Poro, I'm going to have for sure, probably. Everyone else will we'll see what lineups 
shake up is and what kind of builds end up being, but talk about the guys I'm thinking about. All right. That'll be it, guys. Good luck. Excited to get back into Premier League. Check out the FSI website. We've got a ton of sports going on. Baseball is back. NASCAR is going on. Check out the videos for those. Check out the website to join the Discord and join the soccer room where I'll be grinding it in all Saturday and Sunday. Tons of games going on for other minor leagues that I cover. And, yeah, guys, good luck and see you next video. Peace.